The congregation of Emmanuel Ministry Church welcomes you to I Am Alive with Pastor Philip Trent, minister of the gospel for more than 25 years. Now get your Bible and a notebook and let's join Pastor Trent as he preaches the uncompromised Word of God. Well, greetings and welcome to I Am Alive. My name is Philip Trent. I pastor Emmanuel Ministry Church over in Hart County, Kentucky. We're located seven miles east of Horse Cave on Highway 218 in a little town called Lee Grand. We're right around the curve past the Lee Grand Elementary School and our schedule of services, Sunday morning Sunday school at 9.30, our worship service every Sunday at 10.30, and our midweek service is in the basement of our facility at 6.30 over every Wednesday night. We have classes for all ages uh, at Sunday school as well as the Wednesday night program and uh, we're just grateful. We have a, a wonderful group of families and young families and a lot of children, and we're grateful, grateful, grateful for that. So we invite you to come and be with us anytime you can. Of course, we're here on TV, and we have two radio programs, and got a lot of things we do from the church there that we won't talk about at this point, but there is a lot of outreach ministry that uh, goes on from Emmanuel Ministry Church. If you're interested in that, feel free to give us a, a call at 270-786-4339. We'd be glad to uh, communicate with you what the Lord is doing uh, and what he has done. He's been at it for a long time there. Uh, we just celebrated their 37th year, and we're very blessed, very, very, very blessed. And so we, we praise God. I want to say thank you for all the, the watchers and a lot of people communicating with us about watching the program and have really enjoyed my son and uh, he could not be with me today uh, during this uh, these uh, broadcasts and I've got to be away next week so I had to get here and do some today. I'm a little bit bassy uh, but if I sang a song I'll just sing bass today. <laughs> Amen. So I thank you for your words of comments and support. Uh, some people have been sending us some offerings to help take care of the gas money for Phil to drive back and forth. I don't know why he would uh, use that much gas, but anyhow, got a lead foot, I guess. But uh, we're thankful for that, and he's a mighty fine young man, and I appreciate all the comments about him and look forward to him being back with us. Let's have a word of prayer, and we'll get into our service for tonight. Dear God in heaven, we're so grateful for the name of Jesus, so thankful that when we call upon you in that wonderful name, that you always hear our prayer, as Brother Field has taught us, that we can have this confidence if we ask anything concerning your will, and you hear our prayer, and you answer, and you give us the petitions that we desire of you. So I thank you, sir, for answering our prayers and being such a good God. Even this morning, as we called upon your name, you were there to take care of a, of a very, very, very situation, tough situation, but you fixed it. And I thank you, Father, for being such a good God, an on-time God, and a, uh, just an awesome, 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 awesome Father. Father God, I ask you to give me some words to say tonight at this program that would be beneficial to these listeners and those that uh, watch. Father, would, would uh, be edified, would be strengthened, would be lifted up, and burdens would be released, lives would be changed, things would happen for thy glory and for thy honor, and we do justice to rightly dividing the word of truth this hour that we would be about your business. We ask your blessings upon this TV station and all that they do and everybody that supports it. May your kingdom come and may your will be done in our lives, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. If you have your Bible with you, we turn to Romans chapter 1 for our foundational scripture for the I Am Alive broadcast. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. I agree with Apostle Paul there as he wrote this letter. Uh, to the, the church at Rome. and verse 15, he said, As much as in me, I'm ready to preach the gospel to you that be at Rome, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God and the salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For in it is, in the gospel of Christ, is the righteousness of God revealed. What does that mean? That means that you can't get right with God without Jesus. You need Jesus. He is the way, the truth, and the life. He's the only way to get to God. John 14, 
Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. I go to prepare a place for you where I am. You can be also. I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father but by me. We preach Jesus Christ and him crucified for the sins of the world. We don't preach Jesus along with a bunch of other stuff. It's Jesus. Our salvation is totally dependent upon the grace of God, which was shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. We put all our confidence in the workings of Jesus, in the covenant that we have through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. He himself took our infirmities. He bore our burdens, and by and through his stripes, we find our healing for spirit, soul, and body. He's a complete Savior for the completely lost man. If you're in a lost condition, there's no reason to look any further than Jesus. Put all your attention, focus all of your attention on Jesus, for he has provided all things for us through his death, through his burial, and through his resurrection. Everything is provided for us. We're going to look into that just a little in the scriptures tonight. <clears throat> if you go with us, I want to finish this scripture. For in it is, in the gospel of Jesus, is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. So I'll ask you to go with me to Colossians. That's over just past Philippians. The book of Colossians in chapter 2, Jesus has provided everything that we need pertaining to life and godliness. He's provided everything that we need, and we are complete in Him. Now, we look at this through the eyes of God. We don't look at it through our eyes. Our natural eyes will see situations. Our natural mind will think of things that I need and things that I need to do. And, and there's nothing wrong with that as long as we stay focused on the main thing. Uh, we do need to be about the Father's business. Even Jesus said that. We do need to take care of our gardens. We need to keep the weeds out. We do need to harvest at the right time. If you don't harvest it, then it'll ripen and fall on the ground. I got tomatoes ripening and falling on the ground right now. They're ripening so fast, much faster than we can eat them or give them away. And so that's just the way it is. But we do our best, amen, and we need to continue to do those things that pertain to our natural life here. Yes, I'm not taken away from that. And if you're going to cross the road to get the mail, look both ways to make sure there's no traffic coming before you cross the road. I know the Lord is there with us, but he works with us even in our natural bodies as well as our spiritual leadership. When it comes to a lot of things, we need to look within. We need to look to God, amen, looking unto Jesus, amen. And so I, I thank God for that. Uh, what else, let me ask you this, uh, concerning your salvation or concerning the needs of your life, what else would God need to do that he hasn't already done for you through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ? What else would God have to do? Does he have to go back to the whipping post? No, he's done went there. He already went to the whipping post. He already took the stripes upon his back for your healing. The thing is of it is, do we believe in him? Do we accept that? You know, faith begins where the will of God is known. If you don't know what the will of God is and you don't know what's purpose for you and plan for you and what Christ has done for you, you can't have faith in blindness. You can't have faith in an unknown area. And people say, well, that's just blind faith. Well, there's no really no such thing as blind faith because faith has light. Faith gives illumination. Faith shows you. You see, just like when Noah uh, built the ark, you say, well, he just had blind faith. No, he didn't. God showed him. He revealed to him. Re revelation means you can see something. He saw something in the inside. He saw that it was going to rain 40 days and night, and the earth was going to be covered with water, even when it hadn't even rained before. But God showed him that, so he walked out in faith. I want you to know God will show you things about your life. He will show you things you need to do. Now, 
it's not like going to the theater, but there's, there's a knowledge with from within. Many times when I say show you, it's just like there's a thought that rises up within me that I know came out of my spirit, man. It didn't come out of my head. It didn't come from what I saw with my natural eyes. It came up out of my spirit. The sons and daughters of God are led by the Holy Spirit. He leads us by his spirit. Amen. God has already provided everything that you need for your life. In Colossians chapter 2, let's just read there. Let's, stay, let's start at verse 4. And this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words. And boy, they're out there today. I'm telling you, that's, that's one reason we have so much confusion. We have so many strong, powerful speakers. I'm telling you, they can convince you. Uh, people get on YouTube. They get on these uh, social media channels. They get on the news channels. And we got people that's graduated from the same class at Harvard or same uh, school somewhere, and they have absolutely, totally different ways of looking at things. Uh, this mask and this to, to vaccinate or not to vaccinate is supported and, and on one side by some of the strongest people that you could ever find. And then it's by other, on the other side, uh, the, some of the strongest people you'd ever hear speak, don't do it. Don't take it. Don't do that. I mean, I've never seen such confused. Somebody somewhere is wrong and there's mass deception going on. Don't you think so? I mean, why in the world would our country be so split over this issue at this time? I, I know we've been deceived in many things, but I, I think about it, and I'm not standing up for either way. You, you make the decision for yourself. But why would a company like Pfizer that makes their living selling you medicine, hoping you'll live to be 100 so they can sell you medicine for the next 75 years, why would they want to inject something into your body that would kill you early or stop you from reproducing or do anything to you that would cause harm to you? They're going to aim to sell you medicine. They at least want to keep you alive and sell you medicine for the next 70, 80 years. They got good sense. They've been in business for forever, it seems like, the old line of medicine. So they're not out to destroy you or to to inject you with something that would destroy your life, that would be shooting yourself in the foot. But I'm not saying you should take the, the, the vaccine. That's left up to you and the Spirit of God within you. But I'm just talking, you know. Uh, so we, we got some things that's being said that don't make sense. Same way about the things of God. God gets accused of all kinds of stuff. You know, even insurance companies, they have that paw, that clause in there, natural disasters basically created by God. Well, God's not in the disaster business. He's in the fixing the disaster business. Amen. So what, what else would Jesus have to do? What else would God have to do to make things complete for your salvation? So he says, don't, uh, you know, I, I say at least somebody beguile you with enticing words. For though I'm absent in the flesh, yet I am with you in the spirit, joying and beholding your order and your steadfastness of your faith in Jesus Christ. He, 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 he preaches Jesus and him crucified. He said that over in the Corinthian letter. Uh, you know, I'm here to preach. Jesus and him crucified for the sins of the world. He's supporting, he's supporting that with this letter here to this church. And you have therefore, as you have therefore received Jesus Christ, the Lord, walk ye in him. I mean, as you have the Spirit of God within you and leading you and guiding you, just follow Him. Don't, don't get t tied up with somebody. I, and I know they're strong preachers. They're strong teachers. They're very in, in, influential. But God put His Spirit in you. He put His voice in you. Why do you think He did that? He put his voice in you at the new birth so you could hear him tell you and lead you in your life's journeys. And you could focus your attention on what he has to say, not on something that because out there there's everything in the world going on out there. And many people, I'll just be honest with you, don't even need to watch the news. Don't even turn it on because it's, it's so tears people up. I get uh, people talk to me all the time about, confusion and all. Well, the only way to stay out of confusion is just listen to the truth. 
Amen. And Jesus is the truth. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. You can boldly say, the Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I fear? Praise God. God's on our side. The blood's been applied, will not be denied. Every promise of God's yes and amen. Jesus has to do nothing else to provide our eternal security. Our eternal security is eternally secure because of the work of Jesus Christ has already done. He does not have to do any thing else, all we have to do is believe and receive. We believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and we believe we receive what God says is ours. And when you truly believe you receive something, there's actions that go along with that. You will act upon that. You'll act like you believe that. Amen. Act without actions. Faith is void and null. Faith without actions does not achieve anything. So God is expecting us to walk out our faith or to act upon what we believe. Rooted and grounded. I know I'm preaching a lot between these verses. Uh, let me go back to six. And, and as you have therefore received Jesus Christ the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith. Boy, I tell you, it's no time to be wobbly in the faith. We need to be steadfast, unmovable, unshakable in the faith at this time. What is the devil trying to do? The devil's trying to get our attention off of the Word of God, off of God, off of God's program and off of God's plan. Get us arguing with one another. Get us fussing at one another. And you see, when we're, when we're divided, we're not got any strength. You can't, you don't have no strength when that division comes. And that's exactly what the enemy wants to do. You know, we've had some big time wars in, the, in our history of our, this nation. This magnificent wars that America has been a part of the victory of tremendous battles throughout time. And now we've got almost a war within ourselves, between ourselves. Look at what the enemy is getting away with. Look at what the devil's doing. He's trying to destroy this nation from within. And not a shot being fired. Well, there is some shots being fired. People getting killed every day. But you know what I mean. We, we, we got to smell the pizza here. We got to wake up on this thing. And, and especially the body of Christ. The body of Christ, is, it seems like the numbers have dwindled. It certainly is no time that we be in division among ourselves. We believe in God. Amen. We believe Jesus is the Son of God. We believe Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. We believe in the presence of the Holy Spirit leading and guiding and directing us. We believe in the commandments of God are wholesome. We should love one another and walk together as heirs of the grace of God and, and not trying to split hairs over everything, but just get along as the body of Christ. Amen. Because he has taken care of all things for us. If we'll set our focus of our attention upon him, and I'll get into that the next message, I believe. So let me go on and finish this up. I ain't got this yet. Have Beware lest any man spoil you through the philosophies and vain deceit. Notice this. That's where so much is going on. So many they're, they're tremendous talkers. They're brainiacs. They, they have tremendous vocal skills. But listen to it when it's all said and done. What is it promoting? Is it promoting unity and harmony and oneness? Is it lifting up Jesus Christ as the way, the truth, and the life? God said that the Holy Spirit would come and he would reveal Jesus to us and he would lift him up. He would reveal him and, and show us things about him. It, the Holy Spirit's all about lifting Jesus up and we should be too. Amen. Beware lest any man spoil you through vain philosophy, through philosophies and vain deceit after the traditions of men. Now there's a lot of people, sadly to say, that are preaching Jesus and their traditions preaches Jesus and their lifestyle. You know, there's no end to that. It's Jesus. He has a lifestyle. It's not their lifestyle. Now, I understand you can do that, I guess, especially in your home with your children. You can do that. But you, you don't have the right to add that stuff to the Word of God. Matter of fact, the Bible says that you should not add to or take away. We just need to preach the truth as it is in Jesus Christ. Amen. And so, and we don't want to throw the traditions of men after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. Anytime you go to uh, preaching those additional things of your 
your culture, your your way of belief, or your uh, various things, you know, whether you cut your hair short or whether you wear long sleeves uh, or, or all these various things, that that's not has anything to do with salvation. I think you ought to wear modest clothing myself. I don't think you ought to be out in public with all your skin showing. I just don't think you should. But, you know, I'm not preaching that as, quote, a gospel. I preach as Jesus would lead you and guide you and direct you. You need to live all of your life before him. Let's go on here. For in him, now here's he's talking about Jesus Christ, talking about what God has done for us. He says, don't, don't, don't be beguiled with enticing words of man's wisdom. Don't let these philosophers and let, don't let these people try you up and tie you up in their traditions and their additional things, their add-ons. Amen. But let's go with Jesus. Let's stick with Jesus because in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. When you look at Jesus Christ, you're looking at God in the flesh. You're looking at God who made a body for himself and indwelt a physical body and came and lived among us. It was God that was in Christ redeeming or restoring or reconciling us back to himself. God paid the price. Amen. Thankful that he did. Now, he's known as God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. His real name is Jesus the Christ, the Son of the living God. But he was manifested, amen, in the flesh. And he was called, took up to glory. He's seated now at the inter, interceding for us at the right hand of God the Father. Amen. I'm thankful for the triunity of God, but I know the singularity of the fact that Jesus is God in the flesh. He came and lived and died and suffered for us so we could be complete in him. He in him all the fullness of the Godhead dwelleth. And you are complete in him. That's what I asked you from the beginning. What else would Jesus have to do? What else would God have to do to provide this salvation that you need? What else has he got to do? What, what trick has he got to perform? What T does he have to cross or I does he have to dot? No, he dotted every I and crossed every T. He fulfilled every jot and tittle. He fulfilled the law to the nth degree. Amen. When you receive Jesus Christ and you follow Jesus Christ, you're fulfilling everything that God has for you to fulfill of the law because the Holy Spirit will never lead you against the laws and the commandments of God. Jesus Christ fulfilled every commandment. And you will, too, when you allow the Holy Spirit to lead you and guide you and direct you. Now, we shouldn't go around behind one another pointing our finger at one another. No, let's let people live their life. Now, if they make mistakes, all people in their human flesh has made mistakes. But praise God for repentance. Aren't you thankful that if you make a mistake, if you do wrong, if something comes up and you must trip up on something, that you have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous, you can call upon his name and get forgiveness for your wrong. I'm so thankful. Again, everything's provided in Jesus Christ. There's not another single thing that has to be done. All things are fulfilled for us in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And we are complete in him. Now, you think about this. I believe Paul makes this statement in his, the epistles that he wrote a hundred and forty times he alludes to in him, through him, and by him. He alludes to the fact that all the things that God has done for us in Christ a hundred and forty times. It's mentioned a hundred and eighty times in the New Testament. It's all about our identifying ourselves in Christ identifying ourselves in him and through him and by him. That's how our life consists, is in Jesus. That's how we are conquerors in Jesus. That's how we're overcomers, is in Christ Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. All the things that we need pertaining to life and godliness 
are provided for us in and through the Lord Jesus Christ. Now there remaineth a rest for the people of God that have ceased from their own labors and have entered into God's rest. What are you talking about? You've relaxed. You're not trying to do it because you're resting in the fact that Jesus has already done it for you. The works that I do is not trying to get saved. They're works of salvation. I'm not trying to get in God's favor. You know, God don't love me a bit more today than he did 50 years ago. He loves me with the same love. His love never changes. His love for you never changes. You say, well, I'm, I'm trying to please God. I'm trying to do. Well, that's good. There's nothing wrong with that. I think we ought to want to please God. But if you don't, his love for you will remain the same. What can separate us from the love of God? Paul asked that question and wrote there in, the, in that book of Romans, I believe it is, what can separate us from the love of God? And he lists this whole list of things. And he said, no, no I, I'm, I'm absolutely persuaded. I'm fully confident and persuaded that nothing can separate us from the love of God that's in Christ Jesus. Amen. Why? Because his love is unmerited. His love is without earning. You can't earn God's love. His love is given to you 100% based upon the fact that God is love and he loves you. Now, you can take advantage and be blessed. You can walk in line with God's word and receive his blessings. You know, no doubt there's a big difference in that. But as far as the love of God, he loves you without restriction. He totally does. Now, if, you know, again, if you're going to get the blessings of God, then you need to be compliant to what he says. You need to listen to him. You need to heed his voice. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and you and I are complete in him, who is the head of all principality and power, by whom also you are circumcised with that circumcision made without hands in the putting off of the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, buried with him in baptism, in which also you are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who hath raised him from the dead, and you, being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened, made alive together with him, having forgiven you all of your trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which were contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. And having spoiled principality and power, and he made a show over them openly, triumphing over them in his death, burial, and resurrection. So let no man therefore judge you of food or drink or the various things, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is Christ. I'm thankful to know tonight that our salvation is secure. Our salvation is solid and secure in Jesus Christ. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, would you bow upon your knees and call upon the Lord to save you? Confess your faults. He's faithful and just to forgive you. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next week. Happy